welcome back to the channel and today we're going to be talking about backpack guns. Now, when I say backpack, I don't mean taking a 16 inch bullpup rifle and cramming it into a duffel bag and calling that a bag gun. I'm talking about guns that will actually fit within the confines of a typical backpack. But the big question we want to ask is, are these guns and backpack setups actually practical? Do they serve a purpose or are they just a gimmick? And are they worth the price of admission? So let's talk about it. The why. Before 2020, I would say backpack guns were pretty niche. There really weren't a lot of people who were talking about or showing off capable rifles or pistols that were configured to sit within a backpack. Now there were the occasional people who would use a Ruger 1022 takedown or some other sort of takedown survival rifle while they were camping or hiking or backpacking. And they would use that and that would be fine, but we're talking about a completely different tool. Since 2020, we've seen a consistent number of posts on social media about backpack guns, their uses and people's set. These backpacks that people are using are geared towards everyday carry or sort of special purpose carry. So as far as I see it, there's two main reasons that these have become more popular and thus more practical. One of the main reasons is we've seen huge leaps in innovation for small backpack capable guns. Products like the Law Tactical Folder and other folding adapters easily convert buffer tube rifles and pistols into foldable carbines. We've seen much more short barreled pistols and short barreled rifles come onto the market. And we've also seen a lot of progression in popularity of calibers that are specifically designed to shoot out of short barrels, such as the 300 Blackout. And thus, this style of rifle has, has, been, has become much more intriguing to the modern gun owner. And the second, and maybe even the biggest reason that these have gained more popularity is 2020 and beyond. During 2020 and beyond, we saw firsthand how easily law enforcement can be stretched thin and people can often be left to defend themselves. Things can fall apart super quickly, super easily, and you can be left all on your own. And that has led people to experiment with adding capability to their everyday carry just in case one of these situations occurs. Now, of course, most big cities are going to be completely safe as long as you're vigilant. Most areas are going to be completely safe as long as you're vigilant. And in fact, you probably will never have to use even your concealed carry handgun let alone a backpack carbine that you've set up for a specific purpose such as this. But we can see at any point in time, for any reason, violence can break out, and sometimes you might wanna have a little bit more capability than just your handgun. And whether or not you agree with why it's happening, it doesn't matter, you could still be a victim. Even though anything happening that would elicit the use of this particular weapon system are extraordinarily low, it can still be handy to have an idea of how to handle a situation if it arises. We don't expect fires to happen, but we have plans in place to effectively take care of those situations. So this is really no different. Now, whenever I say law enforcement being spread too thin, we can look at a lot of rioting that happened in 2020 and 2021. Mobs can quickly overwhelm police and leave people in the areas where the rioting is happening left defenseless. What would you do if you find yourself in some sort of cityscape and the target of a large group of people or even a mob? Maybe you find yourself caught up in a riot or caught between two opposing factions as we've seen before. What if there isn't a safe or easy way to get to your vehicle to escape the situation? These are just some of the reasons you might want to consider a backpack rifle. Although it is extraordinarily unlikely that you will ever be caught in a riot or have to pull a firearm, it can still be good to plan these things out. And remember, pulling out a gun is always a last resort. Always. It can be incredibly dangerous, especially in a mob-related scenario. Avoidance and escape are always the two things you should do first. Avoid the area altogether and escape the area if you see any sort of danger coming but that would make for a rather boring video. 
Remember, it's better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. I got a lot of these ideas from Lucky Gunner, so I want to credit him for sure. And I also want to give his five reasonings for why you would want to use a backpack gun or have a backpack gun. So I'm going to list those off here. Of course, you can check in the description for a link to his video if you're curious on what he is saying as well. So the five use cases. Number one, you're not at home and you want more firepower. If you're at home, you probably have access to a bigger gun than a handgun, but whenever you're out of your home, you might not. The second use case, if you're in an area where you can't easily escape, or you're in an area with someone who can't easily escape. For instance, maybe an elderly family member. Three, the danger you're facing is either far enough away or it's projecting enough to allow you time to retrieve a gun from a backpack. It takes a lot longer to grab that gun out of a backpack than it does to draw from concealment. Four, you're in a situation where having a long gun out doesn't automatically make you a target. That more than likely means that you've already clearly been targeted for violence in some way and there is no law enforcement around. And number five, it's a situation where having a long gun would severely increase your odds of survivability, which in most cases where you would have to actually use a firearm, a long gun is going to almost always be better. Pistols with braces or SBRs are almost always easier and quicker to shoot than a handgun. You can get more accurate hits from further distances quicker whenever you have that third point of contact. Uh, we're at about 200 yards, and we're going to give this a go. I don't know how it's going to work. I don't know if it's going to work. Um, but we're zeroed at 50. We're shooting a little high at 100. So we should be more or less on at 200, but we'll see. So I'll give it a buzz, and then we'll do what we did up at 100. We'll just do it again. Uh, I don't have poppers this time, so I'll just shoot two on the left target, two on the right target. Call it a day. This is a seven inch barrel and we're able to hit at 200 yards, which is super, super good. It took me a minute to get out of the bag, but I think that that's kind of negated by the amount of time I would have from 200 yards. Uh, but let's go ahead and give it another try. So with the why out of the way, let's talk about the two different setups that we have here today. These two setups are extraordinarily different. One is a SIG MCX with a 6.75 inch barrel, chambered in a 300 blackout inside of a THU E bag. I don't actually know how to pronounce it, so I'm not gonna put that out on the internet for people to make fun of me for. The second gun we have is a BCM with a seven inch barrel, also chambered in a 300 blackout, and it's actually sitting inside of a Supreme bag. We'll talk about that later. The SIG is equipped with a Holosun 515C and a somewhat jankily cut angled foregrip as well as a flashlight. The BCM on the other hand is only equipped with a primary arms SLX. The entirety of the MCX can fit inside of a medium sized backpack. So it's only like a Jansport or Swiss gear, or in this case, a THUE. The BCM can fit in a smaller than normal backpack, such as the Supreme bag, which is actually 20 liters. It might not sound like a lot, but the size differences between these two bags is pretty obvious. Now, both of these guns are excellent contender for backpack guns, but in my opinion, the BCM is far superior. And I actually prefer it over an option like the MCX for the following reasons. A big difference between the MCX and the BCM 
is the SIG is significantly heavier, about three pounds heavier whenever fully loaded. It's also quite a bit bulkier than the BCM. Now bulk and weight might not sound like a big deal, but if you're carrying this every single day, if it's on your person, it can start to wear and fatigue on you and that extra three pounds will add up over time. The bulk is also something that you may or may not really care too much about. I really generally don't care about a bulkier gun or not, but in my opinion, I do like how slim the BCM is for this particular kind of setup. The price of the BCM is also significantly cheaper than the SIG MCX. The MCX sits around $2,500 or so. That's just completely bare on gun broker as a pistol. So it could cost a lot more to get brace or form one in or whatever you want to do with it. So the BCM will be significantly cheaper and that means that you can buy more magazines, a higher quality backpack, and you can also buy a lot more ammunition and get some range time with it. Obviously the ability to fold the gun up makes it ideal for fitting inside of a backpack and that's really the only way that we can get these guns into backpacks. The SIG MCX is a piston driven gun meaning that there is no buffer system, meaning that you can have a normal folding stock or folding brace with no issue. So you cut out the need for the law folder, which we'll talk about on the BCM, but the added weight of the law folder is made up by the actual mass of the operating system itself. Now the law tactical folder, in my opinion, is awesome. It's pretty sweet. The law tactical folder allows you to take a buffered system that uses a traditional buffer and allows you to fold it where you normally wouldn't be able to. Now, it's not really that complex of a thing to put together. It's very, very easy. I mean, even I was able to do it. So you can check out videos about how to actually do it and install it. But in my opinion, it adds a little bit of weight, adds a little bit of bulk, but it's honestly awesome and totally worth being able to fold the stock or brace on your firearm. It is going to cost a pretty penny though at around $250. You can find them on sale though pretty frequently for around 200 bucks. Another sort of weird maybe downside for the Law Tactical Folder is that you can't shoot the gun while the stock or brace is folded. It just won't work like that because it's a buffered gun. Whereas on the MCX you can shoot it folded because it doesn't have a buffer system. Now in my opinion this doesn't really make that big of a deal. I guess if you're pulling this out in a huge rush and you need to get it up in the fight so to speak as quickly as possible and you don't have time to flick over your stock I guess the SIG MCX would be better for that but if you're deploying this backpack gun you should have enough time to pull it out and get a good sight picture and given that Either of these guns, you should have no problem being able to flick over the brace or the stock to get it fully deployed and ready to go. Both the folding systems on the SIG and BCM are solid and they lock into place and are pretty steady. Now you might think that with these guns being so small and shooting rifle calibers that there would be a fair bit of recoil. The recoil is more than a standard 5.56. It is kind of snappy, but it's totally mild and totally controllable. So I think that the recoil isn't terrible because you have the added stability of the brace or stock and you also have a far more capable cartridge. The backpack is probably the second most important gear for any setup involving a backpack gun. Now, like I already mentioned, the SIG is bigger, bulkier. It does require a bigger backpack to fit. Anything between 30 or 40 liters is a pretty normal medium sized backpack and this will fit inside of it. The BCM on the other hand can, like I said, fit into a 20 liter bag or a small backpack, which gives it a little bit more versatility on what sort of bag you can use to carry this gun. So if you're one of those guys who wants to make sure that your rifle is stored in a small bag as physically possible, I would go with the BCM because it's a lot slimmer, a lot less bulky, it'll take up less space, and it's a smaller bag. I also want to make you guys aware of one weird artifact of carrying a rifle in a bag like this. You do get some weird sort of the barrel poking out of the bottom of the backpack. This is extremely easily remedied. All you have to do is cut out a piece of plastic or other hard material and put it on the bottom of your bag like a lining so that whenever the barrel sits on it, it'll actually sort of, it'll push out the bottom of the bag in a more uh, equal way. 
In my opinion, I really don't think anyone is going to notice or even think that you're carrying a rifle inside of a backpack. So I don't know that this is that big of a deal, but if you don't like the look of it, then give the hard plastic a shot. Another thing whenever you're considering what backpack to buy, you want to make sure that you're getting a nice durable backpack. You are going to be carrying this with the gun inside of it and you need it to be durable and be able to hold up. Great brands that I personally like are THUE, Jansport, Swiss Gear, and if you're one of those guys, you could go with the North Face, although I don't think they really like gun people too much, so maybe don't, I don't know, it's up to you. Now you might be asking why I don't recommend the bag that the BCM is in. And that's because it's a Supreme bag. If you know anything about Supreme, it's overpriced and it's pretty mid-tier level of manufacturing. So it's not going to be a very durable bag. But this gun is resting in that bag because I wanted to show off just how small of a bag you can get the BCM into. Also another thing to remember whenever you're searching for a bag is to try not get anything too tactical maybe don't get something like a mystery ranch assault pack while they do look cool and i would absolutely love to rep one of those while walking around downtown for whatever reason you want to try and remain as gray man as possible and we can argue about branding as it relates to gray man as much as you want but the fact of the matter is is that if someone sees a bag that says vortex or something that says mystery ranch or something else that's associated with gun people then they might be more inclined to think that there's a firearm inside of it especially if it looks like a firearm bag instead of just a typical standard book bag that you would take to class or something or take to work or whatever so pick something that's durable and fairly unassuming a great place to find bags also if you're not convinced with any of these brands is to go to like a hiking store or a backpacking store of some sort and find some outdoor gear. Try to stay away from Walmart though. So I hope that our setups and our explanation were at least mildly entertaining for you. Hopefully some of you were inspired to hop on this trend and maybe at the very least, at least your mind was open to the possibilities of backpack guns and their usefulness. So if you have your own backpack gun or you're building your own backpack gun setup, let us know in the comments what you have. I think it'd be a very interesting discussion. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you in the next video and remember to stay armed. All right, you're good to go.